I'll be showing eight new features in Microsoft Teams. This includes loop components in channels, new apps like Stream, Meet, and OneDrive, the ability to customize your own reaction tray, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is collaborative loop components are now supported in channels and not just chat. So at the bottom, I'll click start a post and we'll get a subject. And right here, I'll click the plus button. This is the consolidated way that we've done the UI in the new teams. And you can add collaborate with loop right here. I've got all these different options, lists, checklists, Q and A, tables, task lists, and these are all collaborative, just like the way loop works in all the other apps, whether it is whiteboard or Outlook or Word, or it's coming to OneNote soon. I'm gonna choose a task list here to make my first component. We'll give it the title, the TPS report planning task list. And I'm gonna start adding tasks to this myself. I can add a new task here, and you can see that I've added Alex and Ella. And I'm just gonna do a really quick post of this message. Now my TPS report planning loop component is in this main channel. And now Alex and Ella and others can go and add things to this as well. So let's see how they do that. And it looks like Alex is in this loop component adding one for me. I have to check with Bill Lumberg. that's my task, and that's due by January 2nd. So it's really easy to do collaborative loop components. Now this is just a task example. There are many other loop components and I've got deeper videos to go all into loop, but this is the high level summary. Also, you can copy components by just clicking here, just a single click, put that in email. You can see who has shared access and you can also look at shared locations. So all sorts of fun stuff to do with loop. Just note that it is now supported in channels inside of Teams. The second new feature is also from loop and that is now you can see the direct linking from your task list components to planner or to do. So right here, it has task apps right there. If I click this down, I can say open in planner. Here's a planner board that was automatically created by that loop component. And you can see these are the three tasks that were added. One for Alex, one for Ella, and then one for me. So planner is directly linked to that task component with a linked plan. You can see that right here. What's also nice is this automatically puts the task into to do. So I'm going to open up Alex's to do list right here. And there's that lock down the date. It was automatically popped right into his to-do list, which is a free app in M365. The third new feature is one of my personal favorites, and that is Control F to find something in a channel or a chat. It's super easy to use. So I'm in a channel right here, and I'm gonna do Control F. That opens up the pane on the right to find in a channel. So we're gonna search for TPS. I bet there's a lot of instances. If I click enter, Look at all these places it pulls up really quick. So I can click and go right to that message and find TPS wherever I want it to go. Hey, can you send me the TPS report? That was another one of those options there in a channel. So really easy to navigate around and find any place that TPS, hey, there it is again, pops up. This works the same in a chat. So I'll go to a chat right here. So here's my TPS report besties chat. If I do control F and I search for TPS, hit enter. Oh, there's lots of entries in this chat all about TPS reports. So I can go and click around and find the exact instance that I'm looking for. The fourth new feature lets you mark all team notifications for a specific team as red with a single click. So in product team, I've got three different notifications right here. Up at the top, I'm gonna hit that three dot menu and I will choose mark all as red. And immediately all three of those notifications are marked as red and they go away. The fifth new feature lets you customize a default set of reactions. So right here, I'm gonna hover and I get my little set of reactions. If you click the smiley face with a plus, you're gonna have this reaction set. Now right here, there's another little smiley face. It says customize default reactions. Let's click this. So right now I've got these four as defaults, but maybe I'm gonna turn off surprise and I'm gonna turn off laugh and I'm gonna turn off the heart. And I'm gonna add my own. So we'll add 100, a fire, and a party emoji. And I can even add more if I want. I'll add a, a crying emoji as well. Now I'll hit save. Now when I hover over a message, those are the default reactions that pop up. So I'm gonna say, oh, Clippy, that is fire. Or hey, that's 100. So very easy to change your default reaction set. The sixth new feature is that the Files app over on the left-hand rail is now the OneDrive app, and it pulls in the entire new OneDrive. So I'm gonna click here, and it's gonna load up my OneDrive, and this is the same OneDrive that you're gonna see in the web version of OneDrive. So the ability to add new files and upload, this looks just like the new OneDrive here, all the filtering right here, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and others. You can browse by people. 
You can browse by meetings and all of your quick access to other teams is right down here. So really quick access to other files. All of the benefits of the brand new OneDrive are now right here in OneDrive, which is in Teams. And just to show exactly how it looks in the actual web version, let me flip over really quick. Here I am signed into OneDrive directly into the web, right? This is just from the little app launcher OneDrive. It's the exact same rendering, all the same UI on the left right here, as you saw back inside of Teams. Here I am right here. So it just makes it really easy. And just to note, when you're actually in a team, you will still have the classic files up at the top. So in the general channel here, this is still files. So if you're a teacher and you're using class teams and you're wondering about class materials, that's all the same. It's really on the left-hand rail, this unified OneDrive that pulls together all of your files into one place. That has been the one that's been updated. The seventh new feature is another app, and that is the Meet app that's been added with the new Teams. So if I click on Meet right here, I can get this app that is the Meetings app. If I click this, it pulls up this nice Meetings app, and I'm gonna right click and pin this so it doesn't go away. I have all my meetings right here, ones that I've had or they're coming up. I've got recent meetings also down here, so things that have been recorded, or all my meetings, I've only got one in this case, but if I wanna view the recap, I can go and click right here to view that recap. What's also really nice in the Meetings app is you have things like send reminders or reschedule. So right here, I wanna send a reminder so these people haven't responded. When I click this, it pulls up a chat window and it says, hi everyone, if you haven't already, please RSVP to the TPS report status meeting. So it's just a nice time saver that you can pop out and send people a reminder to respond. If you wanna reschedule, you can also click right there. This will bring up the meeting allows you to reschedule really easily. So a lot of nice features that are pulled right in really specifically for meetings. And that's right there in the Meet app, which is now available for anyone just to add. And like I showed before, just pin it really quick by right clicking. The eighth new feature is another app that's being added and that is Stream. So Microsoft Stream is our video tool for inside of enterprises and school organizations. And Stream has a brand new homepage in the main web area. And we've pulled all of this right here into Teams as well. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna pin that. So I just did a deeper dive video into the new stream, but as a starting point, you can do things like upload videos, do screen recordings, create playlists. It pulls together all of your recommended videos and all of your videos right here. You can go to grid view. I'm gonna put it into list view. I can do things like created by me, meetings that were recorded, playlists if you have any playlists, shared or favorites. So you can access all of Stream right here. It's the rebuilt, redone one, just to show what it looks like outside of Teams. I'm gonna flip over to my same account on OneDrive and Microsoft 365. So here is that same Stream app. If I go through Microsoft 365 in the homepage, you can see it looks very similar. It's the same set of user interfaces and features. It's just now in Teams instead. So I'll just switch back. And here it is right inside of Teams. And I've right clicked to pin this just like I did before. If you don't wanna pin it, you can just say unpin and make it go away. The ninth new feature automatically integrates the Edge browser with Teams chat when you launch a link. For example, I've got a link here for the TPS report Wikipedia site. That looks pretty interesting. I'm gonna click this link. It opens up everything from the TPS report Wikipedia site right here, but on the right, it pulls in the context of the chat. So it has Ashley Kozak sent me this chat. Here's an interesting site. So now I can chat back and forth with Ashley while I have that site open. That is an amazing site. So it's just kind of a handy way to integrate your chats or if you're in channels that launch the same thing where it puts the chat and the context right next to the website. The 10th new feature are improvements to live captions in the way you can style them and position them. I'm here in a meeting and I'm gonna turn on live captions. So I'll hit the three dot menu, go to language and speech, and then turn on live captions right here. And I've chosen English. And you can see at the bottom, the live captions are rolling. Now over on the right, there's a bunch of new caption settings. So I will click settings here. And now I can choose different colors, height, position, and font size. So the language has already been set. I could change that if I wanted right there. I could change the font color. So if I click blue, Right there, now it's blue. And you can also see this is a preview of what it's gonna look like. I can make it yellow or I can make it green. In this case, I'll leave it at blue. I can change the height of everything. So I wanna make it a little bit larger. I've got larger height right here. I could also make it smaller or medium. Positioning at the bottom or the top. So maybe I want my captions up at the top. So now the captions are going right across the top. 
And lastly, font size. So I want extra large font size. So now I've got my extra large font size in blue, height is large, and it's across the top. So lots of different options you can choose for your live captions. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.